What's going on everybody? We are in the headquarters of Dr. Beasley's. We're sitting here with Jim Lefebvre, the creator, the mastermind behind the chemical product, Dr. Beasley's. And what we want to do, we want to dive into a little bit, the, we want to hear the backstory of Dr. Beasley's yourself and, and where it came from and, and how it became. And it's funny too, because I don't think a lot of people know this, but we're actually sitting in your car wash and detail center too. Yes, yeah, Simon, Simon's Shine Shop. What came first? Was it the car wash or was it the chemical? No, it was, I opened up Simon's Shine Shop in 2004 and I had no interest in making chemicals or anything. I just wanted the best. Okay. So within six months, I realized the products I was using, I wasn't happy with. Uh -huh. And more importantly, my customers weren't happy with because I would get complaints. Yeah. So I would use some top notch products and let's say I would condition the inside of the vehicle. Well, if it's a Porsche, people would get upset because it looked greasy and slimy. Uh, it didn't smell very good and it was sticky. Mm -hmm. So then I would try different products out there and I still get this sheen that I think people were happy with in the 80s on plastic, <laughs> but my German uh, customer owners were very displeased with. Right. So I went back to, I started to think back to my chemistry days. Okay. And uh, I said, I can reformulate this. I need l lan lanolin to make leather soft, but I don't need silicone. I don't need oil. I don't need all these other things. So I started to formulate a product that would give it a nice even look, even a sort of a matte look, but it would still nourish the leather and keep, keep it soft and, and prevent it from wrinkles. What is your background? I mean, you started the car wash in 2004. What did you do prior to that? So before that, I was in, in finance. I was very unhappy, but okay. I, <laughs> I was in finance doing a lot of things, but, and I got my MBA. But before that, um, when I was undergrad, graduated at Iowa State University, I was chemistry. I was in, in chem, chemistry. I was gonna be a veterinarian, okay. and I was in that, but I decided, I, didn't, I, I, uh, I decided that's not where I wanted to go to after that. But I had all this chemistry background. I never planned on using it again. It, it, it like pulled me back in. And I said, I can make this stuff. I know I, it's not that difficult. Probably more importantly, growing up, my father was in a way of a scientist. We used to make bird food. And I used to help really? him make different things for, for animals, okay. for first dogs and then animals. And we used to uh, make things for, for pet animals. So it wasn't unnatural for me to start diving into that and making something that I needed here in the shop. I used to buy car wash soap. Mm -hmm. And my guys were complaining about their hands are really dry. And there's an issue with the soap. And they said, something's wrong with this soap. And I was buying the same stuff, but I got a pH meter and I started to look at the pH and the pH was up and down. I would buy a different barrel and the reading would be, basically it's a, it was, it, sometimes it was very, very high base. It could be at uh, nine or 10. And, and that's, that's my guys were having issues with their hands are very dry. And, they couldn't keep the quality of control because I want a pH balanced soap. I'm like, I can make that soap. And the other issue is I wasn't getting good foam. And because I had a reel with a, a coil, I wasn't getting good foam on the cars. Yeah. So there's two reasons I actually put, uh, I made soap that was pH balanced. Actually, I used lanolin again and I put it in there so the guy's hands would, would be soft uh, and wouldn't be uh, dried out. What was the process when you started Dr. Beasley's? I mean, how did it start off? Did it, you know, you just start with one product or? Yeah, basically I started out with certain products and cause I wanted always to replace something better than what I thought was out there. Um, I didn't look for something to make. There was a need here. So I said, I need to develop something for this, this problem that I have. And then I would solve it that, that way. And it wasn't called Dr. Be Beasley's. I was just making products here for the first four years, just for my own clientele and for us here at Simon's Shine Shop. So you weren't even selling to the public at all? No. Did you intend to do that? I mean, or no. was it just something you just no. wanted to I develop just wanted for a, your guys? I just wanted a detail shop. That's, that's all I wanted. I just wanted to do, do that and be happy with that. Basically, I wanted my own thing. I was okay. sick of working for someone and having a boss, and I just want to work for myself. And I just wanted a simple place, detail cars. I know when they're clean and shiny, it looks great. And that, that, that's all I was looking for. What was that moment where you said, maybe I could sell this to, maybe other people would like to buy these products? Well, it wasn't coming from me. I had customers that were, that moved on from Chicago. 
and they said, you made my car look great. You did this, this or that. How can I buy that stuff that you have? What stuff are you using? What brand? And I said, well, I make that here. They said, really? Can you bottle that and ship it out to me? And then I started thinking, oh, okay, maybe I should start to bottle. I would ship some stuff out to them in some kind of bottle, but then I said, maybe I need to make this. And so in 2010 is when we start, we first put up a, um, a website. Okay. I had the name. Uh, Simon's is named after a dog. And Dr. Be Beasley is named after a dog also, Alaskan Malamute. And um, so the first year we put up the site, in a year I had basically no sales. And I realized how difficult it is to sell online. I think my first sale was in 2011. Okay. So it took a year or so to, to have a sales online, yeah. to sell a product online. Now, I'm surprised when we caught here and you showed us around a little bit, like I was kind of blown away, like you do everything here. Like you manufacture the chemical, yeah. the boxes, you like, I was surprised you have your own crimping machine. You're crimping the ends of the bottles yeah. or the, the tubes to crimp them together. Explain what goes on here and, and how things are made, you know, from the beginning process to the packing and shipping. I mean, everything happens here. Well, it might be because I'm, I like to oversee everything that we do, but the reality is we're small. Yeah. We're a small company and I'm not selling millions of this, millions of that. And um, we do have a lot of products that we sell. Um, and um, I just, I think, I never even looked at having someone else do it. I don't know, it's just na natural. We could just could do it ourselves here. To me, it's just, I, I, I maybe, I don't want to lose that control. Maybe I'm a micromanager that way, but I like to have the control. I like, I don't want anyone else to make my stuff except for me. Mm -hmm. And we aren't really, we aren't a sales company. We don't, I don't have a salesperson on my team. We're more of an R&D company. So we look at the stuff, we find a problem, and we create a product for, for that, and we put it out in the mar marketplace and see how well that sells. What's your process in creating these new products? I mean, you're, are you the one like mixing? I, I could just yeah. imagine you, you know, with the chemistry beakers in the background, you got the glasses and the mask <laughs> and everything, and you're mixing. I mean, how do you go about making a new product? Well, it's a lot of, you have a foundation, and you find, okay, first you need a problem. One of the recent one was my, microsuede cleanser. Mm -hmm. We had a client that had a microsuede steering wheel and gear, gear shift that was getting oil, was getting soiled. Yeah. And then he looked at directions on how to care, care for it. And it only said to clean it with water. Well, we know you can't clean, you can't clean oil and stuff with water. It's just not gonna work. And uh, there wasn't a solution out there. So I'm like, well, we can make something what they're worried about is the suede feel. You don't want the suede feel to go away. Right. So you want you want a surfactant that has very low residual. It won't leave anything behind because sometimes soaps will leave something behind. And it gets kind of crunchy. It kind of right. feels hard. So we want very low residual surfactant. So when you wipe it off, clean it off, most of it all comes off. And you want it to be effective. So I would try different surfactants, different percentages, different mixes. Um, till I found something that worked really well and, and quickly also. So that is just trial and error after that. So I just focus on that one thing. How do I get this done? And right, and we're the first ones out with uh, um, a micro suede uh, cleanser. Mm -hmm. um, so that's actually one of our best sellers. And then it's a natural. So there's basic oil from our hands that gets on there. You need, need to clean off. Now there's a need for um, let's say mechanics in your car and you've got really heavier grease. So we have my, my acre suede spot cleaner and a little bit stronger, more of a degreaser. So we knew there was a need for that. And then when someone gets a car, they should protect it. Then you don't, you can avoid all these problems. So we have a protectant too. So that one product led to three or the, yeah, the one idea led to three different products that we sell. What, uh, what are you most proud of? I mean, the products of all the products that you've de developed and made, what's the number one, that, what stands out the most to you? Oh, that's a good question. But I think I'm most proud of us just being successful, selling something. I got a great team of guys that I work with and I'm most proud that we're able to make this happen. And it's not me doing all the things. I got, I got key guys that are just making me look good and because there's a lot of things going on and you just need good pe people to figure that out. But as far as the product is, it really launched us was our matte product line. Um, we had a blog about matte mm -hmm. car and we started to get all these hits 
because there wasn't much out there. We got all these hits regarding Matt. And one of my one of my guys said, Jim, we're getting all these hits on Matt. You need to have a Matt product. I go, really? He goes, yes. Okay. So I went to the body shop. We got some pan panels painting Matt. We never had a Matt car here before. <laughs> and so I had to have a, a, a kit for Matt. And then I realized all the problems that you were having. You can't clay it, you can't buff it. You don't want a traditional protectant on that because that will make it shine up. Yeah. And you need this, the original look. So we put together a kit that will take care of Matt mm -hmm. and keep it looking that way for years and years. And that's probably the product that uh, made, and I realized that having a niche product um, really can make the difference and make you seen out there. Yeah, we've used that product plenty of times on matte cars that come in, even like matte vinyl. Yeah. Like you don't want to add a sheen to it, you don't want to add it shiny, so that's great. I mean, we used a, a couple of the matte products on our cars that come into Chicago Auto Pros. It works great. really well. It's a great product. The, the packaging that you have, I love it. It's very minimalistic, very yeah. simple. But it screams that doctor vibe. It's like clean, like a like a like a yeah. clean room, like a doctor's room. You know, uh -huh. was that intentional? I mean, everything. Well, when I opened up Simon Shine Shop, I didn't want to be a detail center or a car wash that had a strobe light or neon lights. To me, it was tacky, and I wanted people who were serious about their cars, and they seriously want to take care of their cars. Mm -hmm. So we would have the whole do doctor aspect was, hey, here. Uh, Car, a customer wants their car detailed. We had a clipboard. We walked around the car to see what it needed. You know, if someone's got a minivan or a performance car, there's different needs needs there. So there's different things that we wanted to look at, and it's not all jobs are the same. So I had my foreman go around. This is how you do it. You need cars needs different thing, and, I, <clears throat> and he goes didn't really understand. I said, "You're the doctor. The car's the patient." And we need to decide, we need to, to help it uh, become healthy again. Yeah. Whether it's clean, all this other stuff. To me, it was very serious. Yeah. And so I didn't want to have something that was loud, tacky. When I go to a doctor, I hope he doesn't have that neon sign or that <laughs> bright light flashing. I want a guy who's serious about what they do and they have an answer, you know, they, they can get to where I want to go. I to that. me, the car stuff is very serious. That's awesome. I love that theory. It's funny because when I pulled up, you got the next door, you got a car wash right next to you. Yeah. And you got the wavy arm guy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I thought it was yours. I'm like, they got a wavy arm? Got, okay. Yeah, they have two wavy arm guys and they have a sign that has price. And and those customers know to go there and that's fine. Right. I don't want them here yeah. because it's a, it's a different clientele yeah. as far as uh, getting work done. What's one of your biggest challenges with Dr. Beasley's the product? It is... Uh, to be seen on the internet, people find out who we are. Um, for people to test our products, try our products, just getting our, our foot in the door of an enthusiast or a de detail themselves to try our products. I think once they try it, they'll love our products. But there's a lot of companies out there, a lot of companies selling products. And how do, how, how do we get in the door? What are some things that you do to set yourself apart from other chemical companies. I mean, there's tons of chemicals out yeah. there and yeah. and what are, what are things that you do to make sure that you stand up higher than the rest of them? We really search for the best quality ingredients out there. And and we think a little bit goes a long way. You can look at different products and a lot of them have a lot of water in them. <laughs> and our stuff, I want to make sure is con concentrated. I don't want to be that. There's a lot of com um, chemical companies out there that are owned by financial investors. Mm -hmm. So they look at the bottom dollar, how much does this surfactant cost? Can I save a nickel? I'm gonna go cheaper. Can I add some more water? The profit's gonna be higher. I don't look at that. I look at the best quality uh, ingredients I can get and I put them in there without regard to price. Meaning that the, the price just comes out right. to, from what my costs are. When you started, like, were you in the car wash? What made you go to car wash? You know, it's something I always wanted to own my own company. I necessarily didn't care what it was, but I own my own own thing. I own the building, and um, and I own this through a partnership. And it used to be auto repair here, okay. but we got a divorce, and all, you know, divorce, and we went away. The only thing valuable left was this building. Car wash and detailing is something I did as a kid, and I enjoyed it. Even I, I would I would I would 
detail the worst cars, like a Chevy Suburban or family car or something like that. But I was happy. I had my old Volkswagen Beetle and I would detail and clean it. It made me happy. So when I'm working in the finance world, I wasn't happy. I hated Sunday because I next knew the next day was Monday. I hated my life. Um, and I didn't, now, my favorite day of the week is Monday. I love coming to work. And these guys all roll their eyes and stuff like that. But I love being here all week long. And because it's fun. Every day I, I just kick myself. I enjoy what, what we're doing here. And, uh, and we're creating great products. And we're creating, um, we're getting uh, a lot of people on board, de detailers on board that love our products and, and, and really are championing us and say, this is, I'm going with this now. And, and that, to me, that's the greatest compliment I could ever have. This doc, I used to carry this, now I carry this, and I'm, and I'm happy. That's awesome. What's the, what's the future of Dr. Beasley's? What do you got planned? We have an authorized de detailer network that we're growing. We select detailers who can carry our products, and, they, and we will warranty the product for, for them. And um, I think there's a lot of coding companies out there that um, are not standing behind the detailers themselves and they just look for money to make money. They want to scale up and they don't care if they sell a product to the guy next door or this or that. We are giving de detailers some power in our products. Mm -hmm. They carry it and they, and they uh, push our products. Is that, with the, our, is that with the Nano Resin? Re resin yeah, Nano Resin, Nano Resin Pro. We have, we have leather coating, headlight coating, coating for plastic, but we'll warranty that. So that's our next, that's our, our growth this year. Is there anything else that you want anybody to know about your products? One other thing that I want people to know is that we are actually making the products here. We really care about um, our products and how they work. We actively use it in our practice. So we know how well these things work. And we love to have feedback to hear how people are using our products out there and if there are any, any issues on that. And one of the things Plasma coat, for example, when I first used it, uh, first started selling it, people would say it was so tacky, it was hard to get off. I'm like, oh, really? I found out that some paints, it really grabs onto it. So there's a little ingredient that I could put in there to make it easier to wipe, wipe off. And now it's in the whole line. It's just as, as effective as a protection product. But I'm listening, so hey, this is, this is hard to get off. I had to get, use a buffing pad to get that off. So I, 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 I can adapt that and change that pretty quickly. I mean, I, I could fix that in a day. One other thing, I found out a customer, I have this um, glass serum. He bought it, but didn't use it for like three months. So he went to the bottle, went into it, and it was empty. And he goes, he goes call us up and say, this is empty, I don't know what happened. And we went back to look at our cap and the bottle, and we realized it didn't, it didn't, our caps didn't close all the way. So we called everyone on, whoever bought our product ever, and we replaced that. That's awesome. It was a mistake. We, this is stupid. We didn't do something <laughs> right here. And it used to be in a half ounce, and we said, okay, I've got the cap and the bottle form one ounce. We're gonna, we're gonna redo this product. Now it's a one ounce, same price. All, anyone who bought it before, I don't care if they used it or what, we're, we're gonna replace all of them. So we went through, found out who bought it, and we shipped out brand new ones, and we let them know what happened. Appreciate you, man, sitting down, talking with us. Awesome story, you know, it's inspirational what you do here. Love your products, we've been using them for years. If you guys out there want to find some Dr. Beasley's products, you can go to Car Guy Supplies. We supply all Dr. Beasley's product there, and much, much more. Thanks for stopping by our shop and seeing how it's made. <laughs>